the leadership of the disgraced Mujuru faction. Speaking at today's meeting when a new Politburo and Presidium were announced, some said Dr. Grace Mugabe exposed the many things they did not know about Comrade Mujuru. We endured a lot of pain, suspensions from the party, ill treatment by the top leadership at the hands of the Dr. Joyce Mijuru Kabalo, former top leadership of ZANU-PF, said many Central Committee members when speaking to ZBC. I think all what we need to do is to pray and thank the Lord to really guide the team now, at least to work honestly and uh, commit, uh, showing their commitment. And if there are any problems, people should just come out, bring them open and uh, express what they think. Now we are working with people who are united, people who want the party to grow. This is going to make the party stronger in that we are now examining ourselves. We are now saying who are we, where are we going, where have we come from. And now everybody is shaken. All these people started working against the president more than eight years ago. And we could not progress with those elements in the party. You so saw was, yourself at one time in the limbo. Was it because of their machinations? Sure, it was a grand plan. These people started uh, with chairperson from various provinces. And I happened to be one of the affected uh, chairperson. And I think they had a big plan just to make sure that they take over. And I think it failed. We are anxious to see how to move the country forward, how to deal with the delinquencies, and to work hard to mitigate the void that has been created by our detractors. You are one of those who was on the receiving end of some of these short changings. And are you bitter? No, I'm not. I was bitter. I'm not bitter. Indeed, the, there will be uh, time for restoration, and I'm sure at an appropriate time people will engage and uh, make good the wrong that was made. Now, politicians from across the political divide say President Robert Mugabe's recent decision to weed out negative elements is set to rejuvenate the party. And legal experts have said the removal of uh, Joyce Mujuru is well above board. Janet Munyaka and Kudzai Gumbo give us those reports. The unprecedented move taken by President Mugabe to fire his second in command and some cabinet ministers has been commended as the right tonic to exercise the demon of factionalism which had crept into ZANU PF. ZANU PF Mberengwa East House of Assembly member Comrade Makosini Longwane says the country needs a blameless leadership to be able to move forward, and the decision by Comrade Mugabe places the party on a solid political footing, minus the negative elements that were detrimental to the president's vision. Because of these divisive elements, uh, functional elements, the party was dying a slow but painful hemorrhaging, painful death. MDCN Vice President Edwin Mushoriwa and MDC Renewal Spokesperson Jacob Mafome did not show empathy towards Comrade Mujuru's fate. The firing of four ministers is uh, guided by the constitution of the country. The president can uh, appoint, can also disappoint. They, they are bold statements, but what we believe is that there is need to overhaul the whole system. The, the, the functional elements, the divisive elements were also sitting in government and therefore they were retarding uh, performance of government in terms of um, uh, economic recovery, economic growth, uh, as well as basic provision of social amenities and other services. And therefore the president had to align the new thinking in the party uh, 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 with or to what is now supposed to be um, uh, obtaining in the government. Dr. Joyce Mujuru was fired along with seven cabinet ministers and a deputy who were linked to a plot to illegally oust President Mugabe from power. Legal experts have agreed that the dismissal of Comrade Joyce Mujuru from the post of vice president and the firing of seven cabinet ministers and a deputy minister was in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. Advocate Terence Hussein says the president is empowered by the sixth schedule of the Constitution of Zimbabwe to appoint or to fire a vice president or cabinet minister, adding the supreme law of the land does not even place an obligation of the president to give a reason. All ministers, including the vice president, sit at the pleasure of the president.
president. Uh, the president has expressed his displeasure in those that he has dismissed, and that is where it ends. Lawyer Mr. Tazorora Msarua interprets that Section 97, which deals with the removal of the vice president, is not applicable for now, and the sixth schedule overrides any other provisions in the Constitution. There's been some confusion whether the vice president should have been removed in terms of Section 97 of the Constitution. In terms of that provision, um, a vice president can only be removed after motions have been raised by the Joint Senate and National Assembly. These provisions are not yet applicable or are not applicable to the current or to now, to the now former Vice President. The reason being the sixth schedule suspends these provisions for 10 years Section 97 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe provides for a voting process by the National Assembly and Senate, but will be effective in 2023. Another lawyer, Ms. Cherry Tawana, believes Zimbabwean law is clear about dealing with issues of misconduct and what is expected of people who hold public office. In light with the enabling section of the Constitution, it is clear in terms of uh, the conduct of public officials. Dr. Joyce Mujuru and the eight ministers were sacked in terms of section 106, subsection 2b, which articulates the conduct of vice president, ministers and deputy ministers who are expected to act in accordance with the constitution. Various wings of the party and ZANU-PF sympathizers have hailed President Robert Mugabe's decision to fire Dr. Joyce Mujuru and eight ministers, saying it is a demonstration that the Revolutionary Party does not tolerate corruption. Many who spoke to ZBC News said the move restores investors and business confidence in Zimbabwe. Ziwako representative and comrade Josephine Kandia believes the cleanup will clear the way for the implementation of government programs and restore people's confidence in their leadership. Secretary for Education in the Youth League, comrade Elizabeth Masuku, says the move was overdue and that the exercise should continue to weed out unruly elements in the party. For much benevolent North Youth League leader, Tamukanyoni, there is need to continue the exercise as some are still there in the midst that are involved in factionalism. President it was long overdue, the, but uh, fine, the president has finally done it. We are quite grateful. What he, the president has done, it does not uh, only benefit the party, ZANPF for in particular, it also benefits the, the, the country and the economy at large. ZANPF is a revolutionary party. Those who are not that's the best thing that has happened this year in the history of the party. Dr. Joyce Mujuru and Comrades Webster Shamu, Dr. Masmutasa, Zikamai Mavaire, Simbane Utamdarikwa, Munacho Mtezo, Francis Nema, Olivia Mchena and Nicholas Koche were relieved of their duties after being fingered in a dirty plot to oust the president, Comrade Robert Mugabe.
There has been an attempt on the life of the newly appointed ZANU-PF first vice president, Comrade Emerson Munangagwa, with unknown assailants sprinkling the deadly cyanide poison in Comrade Munangagwa's office at the new government complex. Comrade Munangagwa's secretary was affected by the cyanide when she opened the office this morning and was rushed to hospital. President Mugabe broke the news while announcing the new look ZANU-PF Politburo, which saw Comrade Munangagwa replace former vice president, Joyce Mujiru as vice president. Meanwhile, police have confirmed receiving the report. Police spokesperson, Senior Assistant Commissioner Charity Charamba, told the ZBC News that police are investigating the incident. She said all specialist sections attended the scene and combed it in search of clues and evidence that might assist in determining the poison and the perpetrators of the offence. Senior Assistant Commissioner Charamba condemned the incident and promised that once identified, the criminals will face the full wrath of the law for perpetrating such sabotage and violence on senior government and party officials. Police are also appealing to anybody with information to report to the nearest police station or to call on Harare number 703631 at the police general headquarters in Harare. We beware of people who really want to do harm to us, physical harm also. And I was talking about the incident that happened Kuma office is in Zanu PM. The office of Comrade Mnangagwa broken into last night and poisonous powder then spread all over the desk and so on. But powder, which when the door opens and there is that flash of air, would uh, be blown up. And then you would breathe it, and then it would. So it was not Mnangagwa who opened the door, it was the secretary who opened the door. And poor girl, there she was. She breathed it, and uh, she, she's a mess. She's in intensive care just now. Ko pamsana pe cha tatazaji. Why? 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 We will want investigations to be done. I'm just warning you that yeah. it's not always those who smile at us are our friends. In other news, a Chinese firm.